Hello again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Garthwaite. Hi guys, I'm Carly Garrett. It always just I don't know. so drastically. I'm like, oh, and it's time. Um, hi. Hi. <laughs> um, how are you? I'm good. Uh, I love this weather. It's... I don't mind this weather. I just wish the rain would come when they say the rain's going to come. So I'm going to pick up a used chair today. And of course it's white and I'm throwing it in the back of the pickup because I'm picking it up today because it's not going to rain until tomorrow. And as I walk out of the house, I'm like, and it's drizzling. Yeah. So I'm just going to have to drive fast. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> I hopefully have a tarp, it's but it's just the point, like, you plan things. Well, you know, I mean, you would think if we are going to disrupt our entire world based on the weather, mm -hmm. which, you know, certain people are trying to do, but we literally can't even predict the when weather from, rain. like, day to day no. but somehow these geniuses can tell us what it's going to be in eight years yeah. right right and honestly if you go back and look at any of those predictions they're all wrong yeah. they're yeah. all wrong they're, al gore said we'd be oh underwater by now oops so my the reason they need censorship is because we can Al show Gore their thing is BS. Back in the day when I used to watch South Park was the South Park about Al Gore. Just <laughs> man bear pig. Man bear pig. And then, well, I mean, what was the, what the crazy one? Biden likes to say pony horse soldier boy or something. Pony face soldier boy, boy or something. It's, yeah. it's better than Kamala. Kamala, I'm pretty sure, has like a Scrabble board box with words. Like they've made words. And... Then they just go like this with them, and then whatever le order they come out in is what her answer is. Because if I hear her talk about aspirations and goals, like every question, what are you going to do about the, the price of food? Well, we have, I'm from a middle class family, and it's, Americans have, should, should have aspirations and goals and dreams. And I'm like, it's they actually, would like eggs. <laughs> it's actually like troubling when it's you start when watching it, it that way because you're like, there is very little substance there. Is there is no substance. And it's, I mean, it's kind of like, I mean, who, first of all, who is running the country? Not, well, who you know is who's running, running the, the country? country? I saw the a same. photo with Jill Biden sitting at the head of like a chief of staff or something meeting where I was just like, Well, I saw oh. a parody of, a, I, if, if there's a commercial that this is a parody of, like, I don't even know what, like, what happened that I missed? It was, um, there's this conservative mama, she's like does parodies. Anyways, she, um, she was mimicking Waltz saying, I'm just like you. You know, look at me, I'm just like you, and you know, I want to kill babies, but I'm just like you, and I, and I visited communist China 30 times, but I'm just like you, and I had my honeymoon in communist China, but I'm just like you, and I'm like, yeah, that's hysterical. No, there's something, there's, it's disturbing. Something weird is afoot. To me, it almost feels like we are at peak idiotocracy. Right, we're in the movie, we're like, in a bad movie. <laughs> And, 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 you know, and I, and honestly, I, I mean, remember the guy in Idiocracy, the, the really dumb one that runs things <laughs> like, wasn't he like a wrestler yeah, or some crazy <laughs> something? And like, he was in charge and he had like no clue. Well, I was down for the timeline that had Trump and Jesse Ventura. Hey, TV because I trust Benji, Jesse Ventura with this Actually, country. he was a pretty right. good governor, yeah. to be honest. So um, he wouldn't have been the worst. Before we delve too far into politics, because I do want to delve some into, you know, New Hampshire politics. Um, I printed this the other day because... I've been, we've been all saying it for months, the whole year, that like people are driving like crazy people. Like, what is going on? And you know, sometimes you do say things. It's just like when people talk about homeless and they go, oh, you're just saying it. You know, like, oh, you know, no, no. No, the data's there. So with um, accidents, there was an article on MUR the other day. Um, so far this year, there have been 100 deaths on New Hampshire roads. That is a lot. That is a lot. Police say 10 of the victims were under 21 or younger which is an increase of 400% over this time last year. Gee! That, so we're not making this up that it's, it's us. In 2003, there were three deaths of drivers 16 to 21 and just one death in that age group the year prior. Um, police, Portsmouth police say most crashes or stops involving young drivers have to do with being distracted and cell phone use behind the wheel has become a growing problem. Distracted driving can be many things, including using a phone, talking to friends in the car, or anything that takes a driver's eye off the road even for a second. And you ha you can't convince me that it's just that. There's got to be speed involved also. If you're driving cautiously and careful and you glance at your friends, you're not, like, flipping your car and dying. 
So, I mean, I think back when I first learned to drive, my father wouldn't let me drive. Play. Wait, I couldn't. I was just because I had a driver's license didn't mean I could like. I would never have thought about getting on like the New York State Thruway at when I first got my license. No, no, and and I mean, you know. There could be several reasons for that. It would actually be interesting if they did autopsies, you know, if there was a rise, I don't know, say in heart attacks and strokes among demographics who typically didn't have things like that happen. I don't know if you saw, but uh, I, I mean, the, the state of Florida, yes, just uh, their health department just came out with an advisory and they're like, we advise people not to get the COVID boosters based on the current science, plus these unresolved questions that yeah. the federal government is just refusing to answer about efficacy and uh, side effects, safety and, yeah. and yep. the side effects we now know of and, 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 you know. So we'd like to remind people back home we were actually pretty right. It's really unfortunate. Like, I, I, what else is weird? So this morning on Facebook, I see a post in one of the Manchester groups, and somebody's like, oh, so it is the flu. I do have the flu. I've been sick for a week. And all these people commenting, and I'm like, why are you posting in a random chat, a random group about having the flu? Like, it's not like you're saying on your own personal Facebook page, oh, I've got the freaking flu. Right. Where you, your friends well, help. Maybe this was more in a community group, and I thought, okay. Someone maybe wants just some Attention. community yeah. love. That's funny. And all, but, all the, but all the comments, and I was like, why are you all posting I mean, this that was actually one of the things they did say in this, um, in this press release was you actually scientifically – uh, are more likely to get uh, upper respiratory uh, d uh, diseases, yeah. sicknesses, colds, flus, whatever. whatever, as a result of the actual. And, of course, it, it makes you immune compromised. That right, was another right. one they said. And I was like, it's, it's so hard to wrap your mind around this because, you know, I have a lot of friends, you know, and uh, candidly, a lot of them got, yep. got uh, you know, the vaccine. And... They, they were like, Carla, I'm getting it because I'm immune compromised. And I'm like, but this have you ever it. stopped and wondered what? why you are right. immune compromised? Right. Because I had to. Yeah. I had to be like, why am I yep. inflamed? Like yep. everything hurts yep. all the time. Not anymore, right? But I had to. And I was like, oh, I got an MMR vaccine when I was 37 because they forced me to get one to get my degree in order to leave the police state of New York to move to New Hampshire. And I mean, it's as clear as day. I got that vaccine and then my entire immune system yeah, became sure like very dysregulated. It's just there's so many things. So, yeah, it's uh, so it's interesting to see how the states are starting to compete on this, mm. which is important because that is actually how it's supposed to right. work. Right? right. Well, and people sh people have choices. You know, people say, well, uh, you know, my state, this. I mean, you see the same thing on the abortion issue. I'm so tired of the abortion issue. Um, not because I don't think it's an important issue somewhere in the scheme of things, but the Democrats just want everybody to believe that abortion is a top priority. And it's such a bizarre thing to me because it, abortion in, it, in and itself it is only a handful of people. Well, I mean, okay, so I was actually shocked. I did not verify this number, but I saw a stat in the last two weeks that was breaking down sort of uh, various, you know, like how many doctors, how many people doctors kill yeah, and blah, yeah, blah, yeah. blah. But the top of that list said there are 2.5 million abortions in America every year. And I have to say that number actually... How many actually, people do we have in our country, though? 380 million, maybe. Okay. So, you know, but 2.5 million abortions. So in my opinion, that means something because... I know the left tries to frame it as, oh, it's no big it's and it's no, no big, big deal, deal and everyone's feel... doing it. Why don't you? <laughs> it's how you claim your self ownership. And there's like a very distorted mm. messaging right. and narrative behind it. Right, but why are 2.5 people? million people becoming pregnant that do not want to be pregnant. Well, that, but also it's kind of like, let's say, regardless of what people are telling you. I think most people, most women, 
in their hearts would be like, eh, this is kind of a traumatic experience. Yep. Even if like you don't want it, I can imagine that is not an easy decision no. to no. make, right? So let's say in the same way, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm like kind of figuring right. this out for myself, right? But, you know, we sent men to war for a really long time and mm -hmm. they would come back and we still do and we shouldn't. No. Um, and they would come back and they'd be traumatized yep. and they would have post-traumatic stress sent, causes things like homelessness. There yep. were all these knock-on societal effects. So question, right? And part of that going to war thing is explained to us as it's noble, it is right. honorable. It's like all these things that like yep. make you feel good it, oh. about something you know is extremely bad. So let's say on the abortion side, they're yep. kind of doing that yep. same mental trick to women. So, simple math. So over the last decade, there have been 25, just based on this yeah. number, and I'm let's willing just, to concede it, it could be totally wrong. Let's just say we're just doing math yeah. now, right? Over a decade, 2.5 million abortions a year would give you 25 million abortions. Yep. Okay, so in 10 years, that is more trauma than the Second World War, right? right? right. So, so in, let's say in the, in the European theater or whatever, we could break it down, right? But so I'm just saying, I think there's this like massive, unresolved problem out there that women don't have a uh, a clip, a a release. Sorry, no, okay. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, like, not even in the right language. The like a release for it, right? Because the the way it's being framed, at least from the left, is oh, like, you know, you have the right to do this, you should be doing right. this, and, and it's, that, health. And, and it's, and it's like, healthcare. It's healthcare, and it's, it's, it's good, and you're so empowered for killing your offspring, yeah. which is such Fisted. a weird thing, right, yep. to even say. But worse than that, now it's just, hey, we're fundraising off yep. this issue because we're just manipulating everyone yep. who's kind of been put into this story. My point being, I suspect there is actually this energy that is this unresolved trauma where all these people are walking around with like hurt, yeah, right? Yeah. And no one's able to talk about it because if you're on the one side, you have to say you it's, have to be, it's, a it's honorable thing. and noble. Yeah. And, oh, and I and killed all these women right. and children in, in, in Iraq, but oh, gee, yay, <laughs> booyah, you know? Yeah. I think it's that same thing. It is kind of, that's interesting. Hmm. So, so I think there is, you know, it's not just that it's being done. It's also what are the societal effects? Yep. Are we actually measuring the right things? You know, people will say, well, you, people have it done because they're too poor to raise their children or we've made the barriers to entry too high or, but you know, Tammy, I don't know if this is how you grew up, <laughs> but when I was young, I feel like as women, we're just told from about the time we're nine, maybe 13, whenever, that, that it's like the worst thing that could ever happen to you is you get pregnant. Like it's literally, and I'm like, you know, we're talking about declining birth rates right. and all these things. But maybe we drilled that into every, a whole gener couple generations. Generations. Well, and like, that's why, you know, like I, I, there's been numerous organizations over the years that promote, that help women who become pregnant unexpectedly or whatever, because, I, you know, it isn't easy. But you know what? You see all these wonderful stories, you know, lots of things are difficult in life. And sometimes somebody helping you through a difficult time, you know, when you can look back five years later, you're like, you know, I'm glad I was able to get through this well. And you know what? You're, you're a college student and you happen to become pregnant. It isn't the end of the world to have a child. It's not the end of the world to be a parent of a, 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 of a child. You know, you can still have a light. There's no... Your life doesn't end, end when you become a parent. Like, I, but, I don't But I feel like it. that's kind of but what we, we've told people right. We have people been telling generations, like, oh, don't get pregnant, don't this, get pregnant, don't get pregnant. The story, pregnant. you right. know, and, and I know, I mean, I got, you know, a, 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 I didn't ca carry it to a term, obviously. I don't have kids, <laughs> right? But I got pregnant when I was 36. Yep. So, you know, almost 20 years yeah. ago at this stage. But, but I talked to lots of women in that age group, yep. and they're, they're kind of like, well, I'm thinking about trying. And I'm yeah. like, first of all, get, you, get on it, right. you know. But second of all, you know, so many of them frame it in the sense of it's the sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's this, and I no. was like, just hearing it really made me think about it differently because I was like, oh, wow. Like yeah, the you should, what we're telling I mean, it's, women it's, right, right. is junk. Right. Junk, guys. Um. <laughs>
Speaking of junk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, in case you missed it, this morning was the first gubernatorial debate. I did not get a chance to watch it. I forgot that it was happening. It was, I think, on National Republic. So that's Republic. Kelly versus Kelly Joyce. Kelly versus Joyce. And I boom, think boom, um, Steve boom. Lee, the Libertarian candidate, was in there, which... He's very he, vanilla. I, <laughs> I, I, I like Steve Belie, but I don't want to see us end up with a Joyce Craig because of 1% of the state. You know what I mean? That's I, a, I, I, I don't I, think I that's going to that, happen. That but risk is almost um, zero. Sorry. So, a couple things before I go, before I go on. <laughs> um, first of all, we, have, we are phasing out the interest and dividends tax, or we have phased out the interest and dividends. Don't quote on that. Um, I think it goes out 2025. I, I think you're right. Yeah. So here's the thing, because this is one of those scare tactic, tactics. I saw a post, I saw something on Twitter, one of the, you know, leftists were saying, oh, you know, Kelly wants to preserve this tax break for just the 1% of the wealthiest. And I'm like, okay, does anybody, have, the words right there are in the, ta in the name, interest and dividends. So if you have any stock in a company that you worked for, Maybe you work for a company that offers stock shares as a part of your uh, compensation, compensation package. package. That doesn't make you rich. That also doesn't make you have the money now. It just makes you like a sound, a little bit more sound person, right, financially. Um, interest, you know, that's like money you earn in your bank account. Like, <laughs> if you have savings, which only 2.6% of Americans but that, but, still do. But we shouldn't penalize the people who do. <laughs> By taxing them because these people over here don't. So no, I know most of our policies are punish the responsible, punish the people, responsible for people. the benefit so if you were, of the if you're, if irresponsible. You, if you're, you know, 40 years old and you've been saving a little bit of money since you started working at, you know, 18, 16 years old when you scooped ice cream or whatever and you've been squirreling away money and it's sitting in St. Mary's Bank in an interest-bearing account, you are paying interest and dividends tax in the state of New Hampshire. These are not necessarily rich people. So there's the first scare tactic lie that they use. So Joyce Craig has said, if she's governor, she'll repeal it. Well, first of all, she's a little like Kamala for me, where I'm not sure there's that much. No. Like, like you actually saw it in that WMUR interview for folks. We talked about this she on the show. She doesn't seem to be have good where, answers. Where someone asked her a question and she totally flubbed it. Like, and then huh? she was like, oh, can we start again? And no, the interviewer was like, uh, this is a live <laughs> TV recording. <laughs> oh. But when I saw that, I realized I was like, oh, oh. this is not someone who's thinking. Who's thinking these ideas. This is You're someone repeating. Who's like, oh, yeah. I have a punch list of, yes. of, of points yes. to make, and I don't so, really understand them because I can't actually So talk. naturally, you know, this is one of the scare tactics that the Democrats are trying to use that, like, oh, you know, you, if, if, you, if you elect Kelly Ayotte governor, you know, those rich people are going to get richer because they're going to get their, you know, six cents of interest, whatever. So that's one thing. Um, then I think it was yesterday. It feels like it was so many days ago, but I think it was yesterday. Um, in case you miss it, I brought it... We're going to play it. Oh, wow. Um, our good friend, Brittany Ping, who, in case oh, you I don't know, um, Brittany lives here in Manchester. She's lived here for, I don't know how many, like a long time because her kids. Probably 12 years. Easily, because how old yeah. is Emmerich? Uh, I mean. Probably. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, and I've her known son, them for a long right, time. And they her were son some of the is, earliest was born movers. here. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. So she's been here a long time. Um, like, probably 12 to 15 yeah. years would be my guess. But. And, um, she did a TV ad for Kelly Aya and as a small business owner yeah. who runs a business oh, yeah, well, on the come West back End, because we can explain, you know, what the Democrats would the have. The results you in Manchester speak for themselves. Joyce Craig was a disaster. Joyce Craig tried to raise our taxes six different times, repeatedly overrode the tax cap. But what's worse, Joyce Craig turned a homeless problem into a homeless crisis. Drugs and tent cities everywhere. The results in Manchester speak for themselves. When Joyce Craig tells you she'll do for New Hampshire what she did to Manchester, you better listen. Paid for by Kelly for... So. You better listen. You better listen. <laughs> so here's the thing about political ads. And I, I, I've always said this. You know, some political ads, uh, candidates tend to get in, into the weeds a little bit, you know, like things that people can't, that don't instantly resonate, that aren't sharp enough and quick enough and... That ad is a perfect example of a very good ad yes. because you have a young, vibrant woman speaking about very simple concepts of 
Joyce Craig wanting to increase our taxes constantly, Joyce Craig and ignoring the will of the voters and wanting to override the tax cap constantly, and Joyce Craig doing an awful job with the homeless situation in Manchester. And it's Joyce Craig's fault that those ads are out there because Joyce Craig, her campaign has decided that one of her talking points should be, my record speaks for itself. But that's the problem, Joyce. Your record does speak for itself. And Brittany's just saying it. So it, the Democrats have had a huge meltdown. Oh, Oh, my huge. God. They are just like, they don't know what to do about it. So I started looking because I have to actually look because I try not to look at all the stuff. And um, that now we have to paint all Brittany as an extremist. She apparently Brittany <laughs> is now a right wing extremist. And as so many people everyone have, they don't like is, is a right wing, right -wing extremist. So they, including us who are very nice ladies right, that well, everyone Brittany, knows so, on the show. So here's Brittany. Listen, Judge for yourself. This is Brittany Ping in my world. Brittany Ping is a very um, Christian mother, Christian mother small of business two. owner. Her children go to uh, St. Raphael, the Catholic school over in my neighborhood. Um, Brittany sits, she is very Catholic, sits uh, vigil over the Eucharist every week and does, you know, meditation there and all this. Like things that I'm like really impressed that I'm like, really? <laughs> what? She is a small business owner with her husband. And apparently the Democrats have a meltdown because her husband's a Democrat. So that yes. is something to them. Like, and her husband's a Democrat. And I'm like, but you're all Democrats. I don't understand. So he's no, a no, bad no. person for being a Democrat because she's not a Democrat? Because you can only have tolerance within the party. Oh you couldn't God. possibly have a Republican and a Democrat married to right. each other. So... Brittany um, sits on the board of an. Uh, she was a the president of the MRC. She for ran two years. the Manchester GOP for a few years. She was my vice chair. She's very involved. She's a she's a volunteer. She'll help anybody with their campaign. All Look, that type here's of stuff. the thing: the Democrats attacking Brittany is great well, for Brittany. Anyone right. who is spending money to put Brittany Ping's name out there because she is running for state yeah. senate. Yep. Yeah. And All they're doing is helping her. So, they're helping but this her. is what the Democrats do. I'm not. I didn't bring it to show on the screen, but you know, then they make scary graphics. Whoa, scary graphics. <laughs> so this is what the, the reverse the, color, oh, right? Scary, so. scary. So this is what the Democrats say. Who is Brittany Leclerc Ping? And they only use Leclerc Ping because that's what she th she ran with her hyphenated name in the past. So this right. is the only thing they know because they don't know Brittany Ping. A failed perennial candidate, free stater, and member of the New Hampshire Moms for Liberty. So let's just stop there. I don't think it's a secret that she's a free stater. No. I don't think she hides that she's a free stater. I don't really give a rat's behind. What if does she's that a free even stater, mean? What does that even mean? Can, that I, means ask people, that? Right? Can I ask well, that? I mean, so what does free stater mean? The term literally means individualist. Well, I because mean, there is not one free stater who's the same. So if you say I'm a free stater or if you mean, call someone a free stater, you're saying that person is a unique individual. Well, so mean, well done because you should be saying that about and, every and, human. And you know, I mean, the, the goal of the Free State Project, as somebody who's not a free stater, but the goal of the Free State Project, because I've known these people forever, is to get people to move from wherever to New Hampshire. That's it. That's well, all they do. Well, so, to New Hampshire to keep it awesome, to keep the New right. Hampshire advantage. But I'm just saying it's not like it's a cult. Like it's not like when you get here, you have, to, the you have to sign up and volunteer at a soup line. Like, I don't know. It's just getting people to move uh, here. Isn't that just a, a, a marketing campaign for the state of New Hampshire? I mean, this is why I governors mean, that's what don't I oppose it. Because see, my role is just bringing more awesome people so, who want to keep I New mean, Hampshire, New Hampshire yeah. here. So, so that's one thing. Uh, failed perennial candidate because I think she's run a few times because so have a ton of other people, whatever. You know how you win? You run, run a again. lot. Yeah. She also just stepped up to be on, um, work on election day in Ward 11 because she's they She's a moderator, needed, I she's think. Yeah. Or no? I don't know. Something. I but saw she, her there. She, they needed somebody and she stepped up. Yeah, that's to, how to she thing. is. So, uh, the one that cracks me up though is a member of New Hampshire Moms for Liberty. She might also be a member of many other organizations. Maybe she's like, a Rotarian. Maybe. Maybe her kids go to uh, the Boys and Girl I Scouts. I don't know. But this is the, so then this is the way they, this, the, they, they're framing this. Now, so she's scary because she's run for office. She moved here. And she's a member of New Hampshire Moms for Liberty, which if you just listen to the name, doesn't sound terrible. Can I also just add, by the way, Democrats out there, I'm talking to you. 
70% plus of the New Hampshire legislature was not born in New Hampshire. Right. Get another story. <laughs> um, so then they go on, to, because New Hampshire Moms for Liberty, the extremist group known for putting bounties on teachers. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. I think the, the Moms for New Hampshire, you hear Moms for Liberty, and I think, aren't these the people who got people to go to school board meetings? Yeah. And speak up for their kids? Yep. Oh, scary, Parental scary parents rights, talking about know. their kids. But that's exactly what's in the background, though. Mom's group puts $500 bounty. Oh, New Hampshire mom's really... So none of these things have anything to do with Britney. The scary things in the background have <laughs> nothing to do with Britney. Um, and I'm pretty sure this is a picture of Britney speaking at the Aldermanic meeting. She also does that all the time. Um, so it is just funny that... So Joyce Craig wants to run on her record... But then if we talk about what her record is, the Democrats have a meltdown because they don't want you to talk about that. And then that means that anything that you ever did, if you cross paths with somebody in Market Basket who belongs to an organization, <laughs> it is now somehow attached to you because it's, this is what the Democrats do. It's very Stalin-esque, you it's, know? I actually was, saw someone say that... Uh, Politician X is now persona non grata because they were in a photo with, uh, right. with, with let's say, clown show Y. And I was like, we right. are not at the stage. Please tell me we well, are not at the stage where you were like, I can't if you're in a, a photo with, with someone, it I, means I, you I endorse their speech right. for and their lifetime a, because a, that is, frankly, retarded. Here's the thing on both sides. Meaning... If, as in retardation, if, as in not <laughs> smart. <laughs> if I support a candidate, that does not mean that candidate can control that. No, it's It's just, not it's, a back and forth. If somebody says, I support Joyce Craig, you can't turn around then and say they supported every policy that Joyce Craig would. But you that's what the do demo death by association. It Everyone can't. is an individual. Go do your so, homework. I am going to one hundred percent agree with Brittany Ping that Joyce Craig would be devastating um, for the state of New Hampshire. I did see that Kelly's closing remark on the debate. I guess was. Um, if Joyce Craig's elected and sent to the corner office in Concord, we can kiss the New Hampshire advantage goodbye. Oh, that's and that, I, I do believe, is the case because you will see things like taxes go up. She says, we'll have oh, a I sanctuary won't state for um, sure. There will be a sanctuary state. We'll expand, we'll do away with um, education choices for, for kids. So, God forbid, we'll have kids actually achieving education, you know, like successfully. Um, a well, lot of you know, we won't even, because we've run out of time, talk about Manchester schools, but we can add that to the litany yeah. of Joyce's bad, bad, Manchester bad. record. Hashtag. Not just homelessness, drug-addled people, closing businesses. Also, the schools are pretty much failing, and that is also on Joyce yep. Craig. Hashtag Craig's chaos. Still, still rings well. Um, that's all we have time for this week. We will be back next week. Enjoy this weather. Um, get out the sweatshirts. It's worth it. You know, it's nice. It's a good time. Um, if you have any questions, you can feel free to email us at manchtalk at gmail.com. Otherwise, we'll see you in seven days. Bye, guys. Bye.